information that has occurred, and we invited all those who we feel are affected individuals, whether they're township supervisors, borough leaders, to get an update as to the situation as it is. We have a lot of representation here from uh, JKLM, and at this point, uh, Scott Blavitt, I believe, is probably going to be one of the main individuals who speak on behalf of JKLM. Uh, I don't know what everybody knows or doesn't know at this point. My intent today at this moment is to become informed as to the situation where it currently stands and what the next actions are going to be with JKLM as we go forward. So I don't know, Scott, if you want to introduce your individuals. Sure. Okay, sure. I'm, I'm Scott Blavelt. I'm the Director of Regulatory Affairs for JKLM. Uh, Taylor McConnell, Dana Greathouse, our Operations Manager. Bill Costas. Ben Wingard. John Siminski, General Counsel. Jeff Long. Jacob Long. Adam Glenn. Jessica Songster, Outside Counsel. Okay. Right, take care of that. I guess at this point, as long as we all need to know each other, we can start right around and everybody can introduce who they represent and uh, what they're here for. Mayor Scott, this is from Earl to Water County. Dean Greg Moore, Potter County Department of Emergency Services. Debbie Dean, um, Sweet Township Secretary. Nancy Brock, Eulalia Township Secretary. Kathy Brooks, Clark County Emergency Services. Well, on Clark County GIS. Molly Schoonover, First Choice Security. Lori Barr, Citizen. Dale Anderson, the Atlanta Township Supervisor. Yvonne Moy, Pastor of Presby the Presbyterian Church here. Jamie Evans, Cole Memorial. Melvin White, Cole Memorial. Andy Dulas, Cosford Borough Authority. George Olds, County Sport Borough. Ron Angus, County Sport Borough. Paul Hyman, County Commissioner. Marty Bryant, County Sport Borough Authority. Lou Green, County Sport Borough Public Works. Shane Wilson, the Tower Square Borough Emergency Management Coordinator. Ben Citizen. <coughs> Joshua Probanek, the uh, Public Herald Press. Chris Brackman, First Choice Security. And I'm Jeff Walsh, and uh, Susan Kuzola, County Commissioner. Uh, Tom Schaefer, County Solicitor, the firm also represents Tower Square Borough and Student Township. Uh, Tom Law, Student Township Supervisor. Mike Martin. Uh, Brian Phelps, Sweden Township Police Chief, uh, Emergency Operations Coordinator for the Township, and the Cowersport Area Volunteer Fire Chief. Beth Morris, Cowersport Borough Manager, and on the phone with me is Pat Ward, our engineer from Unitech from Water Authority. <laughs> I also am a Potter County Commissioner as well as the Director of Emergency Services. So. I mean, I just felt it was good that everybody understand who's in the room and why they would be represented here for this briefing. Proceed. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of the situation, and uh, we'll take uh, questions after that. Um, as you know, um, JKLM has, has, this is our second well. We started drilling uh, about June 15th. Uh, up off of uh, Sweden uh, in um, uh, Cherry Spring Road up near the Billy Lewis Road, our first pad. We've completed that uh, drilling operations. We're beginning the hydraulic fracturing operations up there. And we've moved on. We moved the rig about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, to what we're calling the Reese Hollow 118 well pad. Um, we started drilling the top hole section. Uh, we anticipate base of groundwater to be 700 feet approximately on this particular well. And we started drilling and encountered uh, some uh, zones of, of fractured rock between 360 and about 570 feet and uh, actually had a, 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 um, a major failure of our hammer bit at about 570 feet, which is very unusual. Um, in the process of, of that uh, operation of trying to recover our bit, we utilized a soap, a surfactant, uh, that is alcohol, isopropyl alcohol based. It's isopropyl alcohol, it's rubbing alcohol essentially, and, and soap. 
Uh, we do that for a couple of reasons. It, it lubricates uh, the well bore, it cleans the well bore up, it creates foam, it helps us get cuttings out of the hole so that we can recover our bed. Um, on Friday afternoon, I was in Pittsburgh and um, I received a phone call from our consultant Penny and R uh, that uh, one of the landowners below our well pad, about 800 feet away, uh, had soap in their water supply. Um, under Pennsylvania law, uh, there is a presumption of guilt uh, out to 2,500 feet now under Act 13 that any operations that we conduct uh, that, that has a radius of 2,500 feet, any, any water supplies that we were to impact, either quality or quantity wise, we're responsible for. So in order to obtain our permit, we had sampled about 30 water supplies uh, to get pre-drilling baseline information out to 3,000 feet. We, we, we went a little beyond the 2,500 feet. So we had a lot of water quality data information, a lot of information on water wells in the area. And Friday afternoon I received a phone call uh, that this landowner down slope about 800 feet away had soap in a water well. Uh, we responded by sending our consultant Penny and R out. Um, they contacted the landowner, they sampled the water supply. There was in fact a soap or surfactant, it's a foaming agent with the, with the uh, isopropyl alcohol. Um, and we offered uh, a bottled water, uh, offered to put them in a motel, uh, and uh, Penny and our uh, informed them that we would be there Monday, which we were this week. Uh, we, we reported it to the, to the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection right in the afternoon on Friday. Um, and then Saturday morning, I, I received another phone call um, from uh, another gentleman, the adjacent landowner uh, to the first resident, uh, that he also had soap in his water supply. Um, and I told him that we would be responsible for that, uh, told him that they could purchase bottled water, that they could, I would make motel reservations if necessary, we would pay for that, and that we would be there in the morning on Monday with the DEP, I informed DEP. Um, and um, on Monday, um, we were on location and uh, observed that there indeed was foaming in both of those water supplies at about 800 feet away. The wells are about 350 feet deep. Um, the isopropyl alcohol um, surfactant that we used is very, very dilute. It was added to about 15,000 gallons of water when it was placed in the borehole. And then, of course, there's first further dilution that occurs uh, when it left that borehole into the subsurface environment. Um, in working in consultation with the EP on Monday of this week, um, we agreed that we would uh, take full responsibility for the matter and that we would temporarily take those water supplies out of service. Uh, we provided, we brought a vendor in, we provided um, above ground storage tanks that we placed in their garage um, or in the home um, and, and we're, uh, we plumbed it into their system, disconnected their water supplies uh, and um, uh, provide them with public drinking water uh, that we'll be hauling into them from Cattery Fort Borough. Uh, late in the afternoon on Monday, I received a phone call from our land department that there were two other water supplies uh, approximately 9,000 feet uh, down along uh, North Hollow Road that also reported foam in their water supply. Uh, we responded. Um, Penny and R went down there, I went down there, um, we identified the, uh, the landowners, spoke with the landowners, sampled the water supplies, confirmed the presence of, of, of surfactant in the water supply, and also told them uh, that we would take their water supplies temporarily out of service. Uh, we, uh, on uh, the subsequent day, began to install the above ground tank in uh, one of the residents' uh, uh, properties. Uh, we finished on with the second resident today. Um, brought in public water, uh, sampled their water supplies, and indicated to them that we will uh, be, you know, fully responsible and take care of, of any damages uh, associated with that water supply. Uh, called DEP on the emergency number and informed them that uh, we had uh, we had two more water supplies. Uh, DEP came out this week and we, we worked with them and gave them a full briefing. 
um, and uh, told them as well uh, what we were planning to do. Uh, they concurred. Um, later, um, last evening, I received a call from a fifth uh, uh, or a fifth resident about three houses up in this area that he also had soap in his water supply, hadn't identified that. Um, our, our samplers, Penny and R, had been going out of the area and sampling all of these water supplies. Uh, and um, we actually identified the soap in that gentleman's water supply. I went out last evening, spoke to him, explained to him what our plan was, notified Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. Um, and um, this morning we learned of a, uh, of a sixth water supply in this area. Uh, again, closer to the pad, we have, uh, we're, as we speak, we're in the process of evaluating that water supply. Um, we are um, taking full responsibility for these, for these impacts, uh, and we're providing bottled water to anybody that we're sampling. We're presently, we've gone back and resampled about 30 water supplies, actually about 35 in the original 3,000 foot area, and we're moving out and sampling all of the water supplies in this valley all the way down to the intersection with six and several on the north and northwest side of the pad. Um, the good news is we just got laboratory results uh, just an hour ago, and uh, the nearest most effective water supply, about 800 feet away, um, is at the Pennsylvania drinking water standard for isopropyl alcohol, and all of the other affected residents that we've taken their water supplies out of service with the exception of this last gentleman, which we are investigating as we speak, are, are below detectable levels for isopropyl alcohol uh, in their water supply, which is, which is good. Um, we anticipate that the, um, the surfactants and the isopropyl alcohol will continue to degrade. It's very water soluble. Uh, it will biodegrade. Uh, it's half-life in a glass of water is about three days. So we anticipate with rainfall uh, and continue residence time in the ground that it will continue to degrade and break down and be diluted. And we anticipate that uh, these other water supplies uh, will continue to improve and we will continue to monitor them uh, on a continuous basis in consultation with DEP. Um, we may elect to do some kind of a pumping remediation of the one water supply that had, is at the drinking water standard, but we believe that uh, fairly rapidly that uh, the, uh, given the properties and the fate of, uh, of this isopropyl alcohol that uh, it will dissolve and uh, readily biodegrade in the subsurface uh, and that uh, over you know, a relatively short time that this uh, situation will be uh, rectified very quickly. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yes, Was there any steel casing in place before you started adding the surfactants to protect no, the yet. aquifer? No, we were not at casing point yet. We were drilling down. We were going to set casing at about 700 feet below the base of fresh groundwater pursuant to Pennsylvania regulations that we cased a minimum of 50 feet through fresh groundwater. And we've stopped temporarily. We've, we've halted our operations in consultation with DEP until we conclude our investigation. Sir. Uh, you indicated that, there, that the alcohol was diluted with 15,000 gallons of water. Uh, what was the quantity of alcohol that was? was uh, it's 10% by volume according to the SDS. We used about 53 gallons in total. Um, so it's a, you know, it was a concentration day of about 0.25%. <coughs> it was actually 21,540 gallons. Okay. Yes. And I should add that we've retained a toxicologist. And he's indicated that at yeah. this dilution level, it's highly unlikely that there would be any adverse right. effects. It's not a persistent material because of its dilution. Uh, you know, its water solubility uh, dilution will really result in, in solving the problem. And then, of course, the biodegradation that occurs, the breakdown of the, of the alcohol that's present. But as Dana mentioned, it's in very, very low concentrations in the groundwater at the present time. And, and every day that goes by, uh, it's it's uh, diluted more and more. Yes, sir. Have you discussed? I'm sorry. Um, you said that uh, you did testing for isopropyl alcohol, but did you do testing for heavy metals, big checks? Yes, else? we did. We did a full blown. Thank you. That's a great question. Um, in consultation with DEP, we analyzed for the entire 
uh, list of, of pre-sampling parameters. So we looked at VTEX, um, we looked at heavy metals, we looked at a full list of inorganics. Uh, Jeff, would you care to comment on the, the Maybe the, the radius of the testing too, pretty good. Everything, idea. everything we're testing is a full, full DDP list. How far from the well, just the 2,500? No, we're there. testing everything all the way down the, the valley. We're gonna test all of the water supplies here all the way back to the 3,000 foot area. And we've tested all of the water supplies in here and some on the, on the northern flanks as well. So we're doing the entire list of, of parameters with these. Scott, would you speak to the precautionaries that have been put in place for the borough and the hospital? Yes, um, great question. Thank you, Commissioner Morley. Um, as a precaution, we met um, with the hospital uh, yesterday morning. We, we uh, as we were Evaluating this, we have a lot of mapping and cross sections that we've prepared. Uh, we determined uh, when we started to see impacts in this area that we were within the um, water source protection area for the hospital, which Charles Cole Hospital's uh, water supply. Uh, as a result of that, we, we met with the hospital yesterday morning with Potter County EMA, uh, with uh, Cowdersport Borough, uh, with Bev, um, and uh, made a joint decision that until we had laboratory data, it made sense to shut their water, water wells down. Um, we also thought it made sense to shut down the one borough well that's behind the mill stream until we had laboratory data. And we've completely sampled the hospital water wells as well. Uh, so we also worked with the borough yesterday morning to, uh, to uh, effectively hydraulically isolate uh, the, the hospital water wells from the borough well and provide borough water to the hospital um, so that it was coming from sources that were geographically you know, different than, than the areas that, that could potentially be threatened by this material. Yes, sir. Um, basically, it's happened Thursday or Friday, you said? The, yeah, the, the, the first call we got was Friday afternoon. The material was used in the well from Tuesday to Tuesday Thursday, to Thursday, to Thursday yeah. last week. Right, and we found out yesterday morning. It seems to me like a lot of time went by before we could uh, shut down our well up there. And you know, if we would have known Saturday, Sunday, whatever, uh, when there was a chance, we could have took it into our water system. Right. Is there a chance in the future that we could get that? I don't believe so. Uh, no. In fact, it's 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 at non-detect back in here, all the way back. All of the water supplies, with the exception of one, which is at the drinking water standard, 15 parts per million, none of these water supplies have anything at detectable limits in them from the first samples we took. We took the first samples of the first impacted residents on Friday. We sampled again Monday through, if it's ongoing now, um, we're getting rapid turn, two-day turnaround in the laboratory sample, so there's nothing detectable. Uh, in terms of isopropyl alcohol in the groundwater flow system. Well, the question is, you had you had an incident happen, and it was four or five days later that we find out about it. Right. Is there any chance we can have more communication? Yes, we, sir. That we could have a heads up that this was going on, and because it moved fast, it did. Eight thousand feet in, two, in one day, wasn't it? It did. And, yes, it did. Yeah, you know, if you did uh, EMA, yes. or whichever. Yes. Good point. And how would we do that? Well, we would contact you. We were, we're in the process of establishing a local office. Yes. And I think you could appreciate it's a relatively complex problem. We need to get a handle on exactly what the nature of the problem was. Because when you make a statement to the public, you want it to be accurate so that it doesn't cause undue concern. Right. It's been a problem. I've been attending a lot of meetings, with the, you know, for the uh, well protection stuff. You're in our water recharge area. I mean, we would be trying to get to a point where DEP would be able to, I mean, if somebody's drilling and something could happen, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, it's going to be more, more drilling around this area. And if there was a chance that you know, something could go wrong, at least people know you're there. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll certainly try to do a better job of getting that word out. We understand your concern. Yes. Just before I came here, I stopped at Hershey's Farm on Route 6 closer to town and there's a pond that's turning white there right and nearby um, there's cows drinking out of the stream right. yeah, could you sampled, include that we've sampled it already um, 
we at the present time, you know, given the data that we have, that, that, that there's nothing detectable even this far down, it, it's difficult, I'm a hydrogeologist, it's difficult for me to imagine that we could have non-detectable materials here and a, and a pond down in here that could have concentrations that could be higher. As you move down, down gradient, you have more and more dilution. So, you know, you should see higher concentrations closer to the source and they should diminish as you move away from the source. So, right now, we've sampled it. We've, I spoke to DEP on the way over here. DEP is sampling it. We're going to take absolutely conservative precautions in all cases. We will respond to all complaints very expeditiously. Um, we've been here over the weekend. I've been here. We've worked, many of us, till midnight every night. We've been out visiting residents. We've supplied them not only with water, but, um, you know, paper plates and, you know, things of that nature, uh, cleaning supplies so that they, that they have the things that they need to, to not be inconvenienced. And we've told them that we're responsible and we will continue to be responsible. We're going to continue to monitor this in consultation with DEP. If I'm wrong and there is something uh, happening in the pond, we'll have the laboratory data to scientifically support it and, and we'll take responsibility. Will you make that public, the results of the data? Uh, we're we're going to provide the data to the Pennsylvania DEP and, and to the other stakeholders here, yes. Did you explain that um, you contacted about four or five households, is that right? Uh, well, we got we, we received complaints from a total of six. But what we're doing is we've got we've got a door-to-door -door campaign going on, and we we're going back out, and we've already sampled 35 water supplies in this area, and we're in the process of sampling what we estimate to be about another 35. So we're going to sample again for the full list of parameters all of these water supplies. Is that a public drinking water supply system that's in the Charles Cole Hospital? And if so, how many people does it, it serve? I can't answer that, Mr. It is a public, it uh, is public water drink. source and it serves about six. We, we how many people? Make 600. 600 people? Yeah. Um, Basically, that's all, it's all hospital today. Right? No, we, we, we contacted them uh, on, I think it was, what's the study, Thursday, what, Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon, we contacted them. As soon as we realized we had received complaints that were in the source water protection area. So the moment I heard that we had uh, complaints in their area, I called, and my, my next phone call was to the hospital. And this is the first, as far as I know, contamination to public drinking water supply system through the drilling and fracking process. Well, again, we don't have anything detectable there. But you did find... We have, we have soap. Yeah. Yes, we have soap. We haven't detected any alcohol. Has it been above the MCL for the state? But the soap is, is non-detected. It's, it's at non-detect levels. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's not. And the, the one the one water supply that's up on the hill is at the state drinking water standard, the Act 2 standard for used uh, residential aquifers in 15 parts per million. Has there been a change in the pre-drill and post-drill test results for those water supplies? Uh, well, we don't have a lot of them yet, but so far, no. OK. Yes. Yes, sir. I don't understand what you said. You say the soap is at non detect levels. The pond up at Hershey's there, which would maybe say it's turning white, you're saying it's non detect No, we don't have. We're sampling it. We just heard about it this morning. I mean, you see what the weight that you're seeing is the soap. Yeah, I don't know yet. We don't have laboratory results. So we're not certain. We're, 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 we're investigating. Scott, I had uh, just the only reason I'm late for the meeting is I just got off the phone. About 402 with um, Jennifer Means from the DEP's uh, PR right. office, I guess it would be called. The basic statement that they wanted to give on this is at this point, I'm just reading from DEP. Right? At this point, we are in agreement with the response by JKLM. Um, DEP has conducted six tests and will be conducting more samples. And the DEP is uh, appreciative of the temporary water supplies that are being provided um, expeditiously to those who may be affected. The DEP is determined to determine exactly how many um, water supplies have been affected. The DEP will be doing some of the same sampling that the company has been doing uh, involving a pond. I'm going to guess it's the same pond. Uh, and they also will be sampling Mill Creek. 
some individuals are, are contacting JKLM to uh, ask for the test to be performed. The EP would also like to be contacted, and the number that Jennifer has given out that anyone should call if they have concerns for water supply is 570-327-3632. Five seven zero three two seven three six three six. I'm basically uh, just parroting what I heard from Jennifer Means here. But I thought it may be helpful. To we've been we've been working very closely with her. I would like to suggest at this point. I know we've had several questions. I would like to hear from those who were invited to this as a municipal individual supervisor. Are there any questions from those who are? have a vested interest in this because they represent a township, borough, agency, the hospital, the borough. Do you have any questions for Scott? For, for being the township POC, they've been in touch with us in regards to it. And I think procedurally, I know Lou asked the question, they reported immediately to DEP. And I think they've met their obligation. I think then DEP would be the ones that notify the borough and these other drinking water. I, I think from that response, it, it, it's been more than on top of it and open about this to rectify this situation. So. From supervisors and or secretaries of those townships, do you have the contacts and the people that we need to know? Is there anybody here that you would like a phone number or a name or who they represent, what they represent? Numbers and names. You have all that you need. As mentioned in the press release, do we have a website that will be operational tomorrow? Okay. So we will post regular updates on the website. All right. I'm not trying to push the meeting forward. It's just I think at this point, I wanted to make sure those who were here representing the townships, boroughs, and others had an opportunity if they had a need for a question or a number or whatever that they could have an opportunity to get that. Um, I would like you to respond to, I think it was the press release that was released to Solomon's Woods, that was posted on Solomon's Woods, was it your press release? Yes. Well, all right, I have a question I, I didn't quite understand. It said something about the surfactant that was used it was not on DEP's approved list for that stage of um, drilling. Right. And I, uh, maybe you addressed this earlier, but I, and I missed it. But I, I was curious about that. Um, we did not. Um, the statement's entirely accurate. The, the surfactant we used was not permitted during the phase of drilling when we were in. And I would like to give you a very fancy answer as to why that happened. But the simple fact is we screwed up. It's a mistake. That's why we take the responsibility. May I add that Jennifer means that the EP also acknowledged that as well, that, uh, that they feel that the company heard uh, and the we did, consequences. We, we can't tell you all how uh, deeply sorry we are for what happened. Um, it is our responsibility. We will be here as long as it takes to make sure that none of you suffer any ill effects from what we did. I have a question to follow up on that. The surfactant that you used, is it approved for use in any other stage or? Once we have penetrated and cased off the fresh water zones, it is a permitted surfactant for the remainder of the well. Okay. But not in the fresh water zone. Yeah, yeah. am I to assume then that it's not permitted because there is no casing to protect water? It's not permitted because very few chemicals are permitted. The, the prescribed method of drilling through fresh water zone is with fresh water only. It is the, it is the best means to protect the aquifer. Okay. Um, I don't know of any surfactants yeah. really. Um, well, we're really not permitted to use anything until you set surface casing as you're penetrating the aquifer system that people are drinking from. The best management practice is to use air and water only. Nothing that nothing that is can't be ingested. So have you determined why it was used? We had an issue at the well, and if, until I can give you an ironclad reason um, who and when and why. The, the best answer I can give you is we made a grave error. Thank you. 
the person that decided felt that it was appropriate for operational reasons, but it was still in the state. How deep is the aquifer in that area? Um, we've drilled a test a test well on the other pad. Uh, for, pursuant to DEP's rules, we have to have what they call a casing and cementing plan on site. Mm -hmm. Chapter 78 requires, that's the, one of the primary rules that govern us, Pennsylvania law, you have to case a minimum of 50 feet through fresh groundwater through the bottom of it and no more than 200 feet. And so we drilled a test well up on the Sweden Valley pad and logged it, uh, had professional geologists present and determined through scientific data that the base of fresh groundwater was at a certain depth. That data extrapolated to the Reese Hollow pad basically indicated that fresh, the bottom of fresh groundwater was about 650 feet. So we were going to set about 700 feet of casing and then cement it back to surface. Once that casing is set and cemented, we've isolated the groundwater, and then anything that goes on inside that well can't impact groundwater because it's isolated from it by casing and cement. How deep was the well at this point when you had this incident? Thank you. Sure. Well, it was 571 feet. Thank you. We've, you've talked about the effects that may happen for the human life. What about the wildlife in that area? Will they be affected in any way by the Well, solution? one of the solutions that, that DEP offers is what they call natural attenuation. Natural attenuation is a process whereby naturally occurring conditions uh, like dilution, uh, or like biodegradation, the, bac the bacteria loves uh, materials like this and they actually eat it and degrade it. And the, the, in talking with our toxicologist, uh, the biodeg between the biodegradation and the dilution, that will physically break down the, the, the isopropyl alcohol uh, into, into uh, you know, materials that, are, that don't pose a hazard. And we expect it to flush from the system quite rapidly. You had mentioned at the very beginning um, that the well pad at Reef Hollow had fractured rock at 360 to 500 feet. Is that unusual? You know, um, fractured rock in, 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 in this geologic setting in the Appalachian Basin, you drive down the highway and you see row outcrops mm -hmm. and you see cracks and waters leaking out of it. That's what we all depend upon for our water supplies. So we know they're there. We may not know where every crack is, but we anticipate, I'm a geologist, we anticipate when we drill through this material, we're going to find cracks in the rocks. They're naturally occurring. You, you'll see them all around the outcrops. In the wintertime, you see the whites of the icicles hanging off of them. So we know that they're there. And that's why people's water supplies are there. In many cases, without that, without those cracks, you wouldn't have a water well. Yes, sir. JKLM, JKLM is just coming into the area, just starting to drill. They're going to be around a while. Uh, this happened due to human error. Uh, is there a policy or procedure in place that's going to prevent it in the future? It's difficult to establish a policy to prevent human error, but we are going to diligently and honestly take a look at why this happened and who's responsible for this happened, and that includes a review of all the personnel that were involved. We are, again, I mean, I, the way I took it, you knew you were in uh, groundwater and used chemicals or whatever that you shouldn't be using in groundwater. Correct. So somebody made that call. That's correct. Um, you'll know the next time you'll be in groundwater, and that call should not be made. No, you shouldn't do that again. That's what I'm saying. That's right. Uh, that's correct. That's where you want to be. That's correct, that's right. sir. We need we need to at all times be in full compliance with all of these rules because the rules are there for a reason. And um, again, we we meant to say. I mean, I'd like to see you get all the gas you want. I said from the very beginning when I heard you people were coming, just don't mess my life. <laughs> we want to drink this stuff. Agreed. Understood. Agreed. We couldn't be, we couldn't be more in agreement. So is the problem that caused this problem rectified, or is your thing still stuck in the hole? No. The, the, the condition of the well is we effectively have a very large diameter water well right now. The, the depth of the well is 
700 feet. Um, BEP has instructed us to cease all operations, so there is no casing in the well currently. All chemicals have been removed from the immediate area. The rig is in a shutdown standby mode, and it will stay that way, and we will take further instructions for the well from the BEP. So the piece of stuff is unstuck? It's gone, yeah, we, we, were, we recovered the- So that the, problem's taken care of. That so problem is taken care of. There's a well, basically, in the ground. Right. Yeah, at this point, in time full of water. That's a problem. You can't do anything with that, obviously. Have you put any any clean, clear water into there, tried to flush it out, or we, isn't that permittable? We had, a, <clears throat> we had a procedure in place where we were going to start to, actually, our, one of our, our internal suggested solutions would have been the opposite. We were going to pump the well and try and retrieve some of these contaminants through pumping the well. Uh, we need to receive the permission of the DEP in order to do that. We are seeking to do that, but we haven't done it yet. Yeah, what we don't want to do is in, in, in our sincere desire to fix the problem, do something that's ill-conceived that makes another problem, and adding water to the well will drive it further. We don't want it to go further from the source area. We want to keep it closer. We want to know where it is. So if any, if we're going to do anything, we're going to withdraw water, create hydraulic influence, and keep it close, rather than keep, you know, promoting its, its migration. Right. And in fairness to the DEP, they can't make the decision until we give them a detailed proposal. Right. So we're yes. going to get that to them tomorrow. Yeah. We're rounding up data just as fast as we can. But one of the problems with these analyses is they they simply take time right. there's, it, there's a specific time involved in getting the answers that you right. you can't you can't hurry chemistry it, yeah. it has to be done at a certain time yeah. but we are we're moving all of this data to the DEP just as soon as we have it and they're going to need some time to review it right. when do you get the results back from the public water supply of the, the borough and the hospital? Uh, we should have the hospital data by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, and the borough was the well was sampled today, I believe, Jeff. So we're driving it to the laboratory uh, down in Lancaster. Uh, we're getting a two-day turnaround once the lab receives the data. Mm -hmm. we're, we're expediting the turnaround. Normally, normally lab results take 21 days, and we're getting it in two. Mm -hmm. And the hydraulic action is the main reason that the hospital shut the walls right. down because we didn't want to create a right. shop back situation. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So we're, we're trying to work very, very closely with stakeholders and we'll continue to do so. Is this well part of the lease that the hospital signed? Uh, I don't know. No, no, no. no, no, no. 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 So that one would be closer to the hospital? Which one? The hospital signed a lease with JKLM. Uh, I, I can't so, answer that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that we are that far in our planning process that we precisely know which well the hospital lease would be involved in, but it is a, it's a future, <coughs> probably not even on the drawing table kind of well at this point. You know, one thing I can say as a scientist is that this process is very iterative. You know, we're collecting scientific data, and as Bill indicated, we've made a mistake, but as we collect more and more data, that helps us to, to design our operations better. The more data we collect, the more wells that we drill, we understand more about the groundwater flow system, we understand more about the, the, the vulnerabilities in this area that we may not have understood as well earlier. So our, our objective certainly is to collect that data, to analyze that data, be very, very thoughtful, and as we go forward, to do th continually do things di differently to try to improve our operations. Mm -hmm. We have um, published a press release. Our intent right now is to also publish daily updates. So you should um, look forward to, for those of you who are interested, you should look forward to seeing an update tomorrow, sometime. Um, and then we will endeavor to keep the information flow up on a, on a daily basis. Um, we will try and go through the same sources so where you got your information today, you should be able to get your information tomorrow. And we will try to try our best to keep everybody as informed as we are. In, in consulting with our chairman and supervisor for Sweden, from the emergency operation coordinator point, all information we're going to defer to your public information officer from JKLM. 
and that website for that information. Obviously, we continue to work with you guys and the information, but that information needs to come from you guys, and that's how we're going to deal with that information so it's accurate and factual, uh, getting out to the public and not coming to Michigan Street. Um, we've been working on the fire side of it. With the, the borough's been in touch with us. We have alternate plans in place. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have a great municipal water system, mm -hmm. and with them shutting their wells down, if we had a large fire, it could affect that. Mm -hmm. as well as with the hospital we have alternate plans in place mm -hmm. if that need arises mm -hmm. for the time being so uh, we've been made aware of all these situations and have plans and contingencies in place for that so and you mentioned that there was a website that's going to go online tomorrow what's that uh john yes what, what's the website it's i believe it's northhollowresponse.com right. some of the last questions correct right. Well, yes, NorthHollowResponse.com, and it should be updated pretty regularly. If you haven't seen the press release, I don't have many, but I have about 20 here. You're welcome to take one. Uh, it's also posted on Solomon's Words, and I think has gone to the Bradford era of the Endeavor and Enterprise. There'll be a link on there, then I'm assuming. It should be a hyperlink when they post it. NorthHollowResponse.com, all lowercase, WWW. It's not active right now. No, but. You won't work today. <laughs> Okay, there's a hundred more questions to be answered, I'm sure, and they will get answered. First of all, I appreciate Jake LM's willingness to come to the table and brief us on the situation. None of this is anything that anybody wants, but we have it, so let's deal with it. I think we've got good, strong emergency service, first responders, supervisors and individuals that can take us to where we need to get to and as we continue to work together restore the water back to where it needs to be and the risk management practices that will be in place from this day forward I'm sure will include do not do this so other than that I guess if we can discuss to whatever degree we want about many many things but that is basically what we were here for. We appreciate the briefing, and if there's anything further, I'm sure the emergency services, the potter will be handling things. Uh, commissioners will be up to speed on most of it, the supervisors, the borough, the hospital, and we'll move forward. But I would like to see it done under a factual faction, not a, here's what I heard, because that does no one any good. So, from that point, thank you again. One more thing, I, I, I hear the need for better communication, so I will talk to the website people about having a form submittal so that we can get questions that way also. So if you, if you have a question and you can't find another way to get it answered, we'll be able to post it on the website and we will do our level best to get an answer back to you. I believe procedurally, though, you folks did notify DEP. That other notification to the borough and the other should have came from DEP, right. correct? Yes. Yeah. So. We just didn't want it. Right. Yep. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. DEP did want to find out. Good.